uh, Thomas uh, Vanderwall. Um, he says, uh, you know, John, there's a massive rethink needed as many of the problems areas still are huge gaps. So there's still huge gaps be, fi be filled, and yet there's a massive rethink around it. You, you're involved in looking at some of the future problems and, and services that could come out around yes. these complex environments. I mean, look at what Heroku did, for example, with, with what they did with Ruby. They basically took a developer environment and, and, encaps uh, and uh, encapsulated away all the, abstracted away all the complexities for configuration management and so on and so forth. So that's going to be more the norm. But there are still huge gaps for IT departments that, that yep. are operating there. What do you see there? So great question. I mean, uh, proactive care, which is um, a new offer uh, as part of our new portfolio. Um, you know, one thing that's consistent globally from our customers, they keep asking, you know, keep my system running, keep my system up to date, um, and ideally fix it before it breaks, which talks to the whole notion of being proactive. Uh, and if you look up the word proactive, you'll find that it really means acting in advance um, of a problem or dealing with a problem before it even occurs. So proactive care is designed all around the concept of uh, mitigating risk in the IT environment. So what we first do when you sign up as a proactive care customer is we come in, assess your end-to-end -end environment and look for um, uh, potential risks in the uh, in the configuration, in the firmware, in the versions of software that you're running, in the policies, in the knowledge gaps of your people, and try and put in place a, uh, a plan to make sure that uh, all of the proactive services can then be delivered to get you to a best-in-class configuration and then keep you there. And of course, that minimizes risk, avoids downtime, expensive downtime in these environments, and is uh, is, is is very very valuable. So I asked Thomas uh, to, to clarify because. I kind of, it was kind of a broad question. I kind of you know, took liberties in putting in my little editorial on that, on that first question. He then followed and said, uh, in the B2B space, the identity federated uh, spaces for work is really painful. Also, distributed systems loosely joined through a standard is key. So, you know, HP has always said standards are, it's, you're standard based and you're open and, and the way you've yep. built your systems uh, has been, you know, fabulous from 3Com all the way down Absolutely. to everything else. So, um, there's no, no problem there. I, give a good checkpoint on that. Others go proprietary, we know who they are, Oracle, et cetera. Uh, but this is a good point, the whole identity management systems, uh, et cetera. Uh, how do you talk about that? So I think the, uh, you know, HP, uh, well recognized as a partner friendly company. And uh, when it comes to the single point of contact, as if you sign up as a proactive care customer, we're covering your end-to-end -end environments. We're not going to bounce you. There's no finger pointing between, let's take an example of a customer who has a, an issue in their environment. They're not sure where the issue is. Is it hardware? Is it hypervisor? Is it Windows? Is it Linux? Um, they can call that single number and we can then either solve the problem, over 90% of the problems that come in uh, on Linux, for example, are dealt with by our experts in the advanced solution centers. Uh, we don't need to hand off to, to a third party, but if we do need to connect with those third parties, we're the world's largest IT company. We have deep relationships with, their, with the uh, Novells and the, and, and the Red Hats of this world and the VMwares of this world, so we can really help resolve those issues very, very quickly and very... Uh, very efficiently. Well, just to continue, you got a great, great conversation going on with some folks that are that are in this space. So, so um, on Twitter. So, again, I, I've been following HP for many, many years on the services. So, I will say that I'm pretty close to what you guys are doing. Um, but I think there's a perception problem out there in the I would call the general public, where you know, one size fits all. You know, solution. You know, one stop shop has been a buzzword out there. Uh, so Tom follows, follows up and says, "One system for all has never worked, and is more problematic now than ever. It's the cocktail approach, not the neat approach." So I think what he's saying is a general sentiment in the market around the FUD around that one size fits all, one stop shop. Now, I will give you guys credit. HP is a one stop shop in the sense of saying one point of contact, not the one stop shop for everything. Could you just clarify and just parse through that? Because that's kind of an important point what you're, what you're referring to. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we've, you've just heard from uh, Seamus Dunn. He talked about our data center care offering, which allows you to pull together the various different building blocks to solve a, a, a sort of a, a particular need for a particular client. A hyperscale customer is a perfect example where they need very special attention, and it varies customer to customer. Um, with proactive care, you know, the common theme that we've heard, as I said, from customers globally, there's, we've tried to keep the service deliverables, the, the mandatory deliverables, as as, uh, as consistent as possible, and keeping my system uh, running, keeping it up to date, and fixing it before it breaks, i.e. 
speaking to the notion of proactive, is consistent across, across the globe. So proactive care, what you get with proactive care as a minimum, you can of course add any of the additional uh, proactives. HP has been in this business for a very long time. We have a, a market leading position in terms of the amount of different collateral and IP we have. But from a proactive care point of view, there's three critical elements that you get as a customer. Firstly, platform revision management. And th what that does is we come in at the start and then on a regular basis through the year, and we check all of your firmware and software to make sure it's the very latest versions, make sure everything's up to, up to, up to the standard that it should be. And, of course, that helps minimize uh, any problems or issues. Second thing, proactive scan. This is a really big deal where we come in, we've done tens of thousands of implementations globally, so we'll map your configuration against what we know to be a best-in-class configuration and look for any gaps or any inconsistencies in, for example, configuration files, performance, security, uh, all of the different threats that we might know to be out there. So proactive scan is a critical one. And then another element that you get with proactive care is the uh, uh, quarterly incident report, where we sit down, we look at all of the activity that happened within the last three months, we look for trends and for reoccurring problems. There's some great examples. I just worked with a customer who had a problem. Um, it was causing all sorts of outages. And they couldn't really figure out what the problem was. And we looked at the incident report, and over the period of three months, we realized that one of our technical specialists in the uh, call center realized that um, there was a pattern going on, and it was actually a loose cable. So uh, the customer was trying to fix their kernel. They were trying to fix the hardware. They were trying to add more configuration, more hardware. But actually, the problem turned out to be a cabling issue. And it was looking at that three-month history that allowed us to be able to do that. So those are the three critical elements. To making sure your software is current, making sure that you're best in class from a configuration point of view, and then making sure you're learning from the incidents that occur on a quarterly basis and putting improvement plans in place. Do you see those features becoming um, more self-service, uh, even more frequent than that? Or is this sort of the right mix based on what customers are telling you? Well, what customers are telling us, I mean, what we've heard many times uh, from customers is we're spending too much time firefighting and, and, and delivering and working on operational type issues. I used to be a system admin mm. at, a, at a previous customer of HP, and uh, I can tell you my whole team was involved in doing patch management and firmware upgrades and dealing with all sorts of operational issues, and it was a constant frustration for the management that we never could get to implementing the new strategies and the innovations. Um, I'll give you a great example. We have a, a bank over in Europe that that I just work with, where um, they they uh, coming from a mainframe background, very smart IT staff. Um, they're moving on the journey to cloud and to converged infrastructure. They purchased thousands of blades. Um, unfortunately, the channel partner who sold the solution didn't include any services, didn't include any training or knowledge transfer for the staff. And we ended up in a real problem situation where the customer, assuming that these things could manage themselves and that their previous knowledge on mainframes would carry them through successfully, it worked okay for a while until they started realizing virtualization, firmware, software. They were loading software at will. They were issuing virtual machines left, right, and center. They ended up in a, in a, in a problem situation. So we came in and helped that customer. And within 24 hours, we were able to turn on inside remote support. We were able to give them control back of their IT. They sort of lost control of what was going on in that phenomenal technology they just purchased. Just because they weren't following uh, industry best practice, they weren't doing it right the first time. And, uh, and, and that's a common problem that we see. So. All right, Jerry Nolan, thank you very much for continuing the Irish Connection and coming on.